would please to get a hymnal in front of you there and turn to page 119 and we'll all stand and sing together till the storm passes by. standing for prayer. Brother Carl Barocious is coming to lead our prayer tonight, so let's pray together. Amen. Carl. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you this evening for the opportunity that we have to be in your house this evening. Yeah. God, we thank you for the many visitors that are here and for those that have come to uh, be a part of the program and to uh, view the program with the school. Lord, we just pray now that you'll bless in everything yes. that's said and done. Father, we thank you for the victories of this morning, for the preaching of the word, and Lord, we pray this evening that you'll meet with us again. Father, I pray that you'll speak to our hearts. Lord, I pray that you'll use your word in our lives for your glory. Thank you again in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Carl. You may be seated. Choir may be seated as well. Thank you for coming tonight. We appreciate you being here. And uh, we want you just to relax if you can. We're not here to get anything, or get anything out of you. Hopefully we can give something to you and being a blessing to you. Hope you enjoy the services. We'll keep you as brief as we can. And our intention is not to keep you long. Have the program speak to you for a few minutes and go from there. 
Uh, oh, well, I need to make an announcement. I want to make sure I got it correct. I believe Brother Nathan has said after the services, not everybody's invited to his house for a pizza. Is that the announcement I'm supposed to make? Is that it? Okay, I thought it was. <laughs> I should have want to get something wrong. <laughs> Brother Nathan Barker is the principal of our school and has been with us for about five years now. And uh, I appreciate him, appreciate the staff and our workers. And he's going to come right now. And just we're going to do something a little bit different than we planned on doing. Okay. I'm going to have my teachers come up and give their, uh, give their names and the grade that they taught just so you can meet our staff at Mount Pisgah Christian Academy. The Lord has blessed our student body this year with 115 students, and we thank the Lord for His wonderful mercies and goodness to us. So I'm going to have, uh, we're just going to have, we'll come in uh, numeric order. First, kindergarten, we'll start with Miss Pennington as always. So Miss Pennington, why don't you come up, give us your name and your grade. The rest of you, line up behind her. Grade that you teach. Not your age, yes. <laughs> that might shock us. <laughs> the worst thing about teaching kindergarten is I always have to be first. But I'm Julie Pennington. Uh, I've been teaching at Mount Pisgah Christian Academy. Uh, this is my 15th year. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever Craig Price comes up, when I first started teaching here, Craig Price was in the third grade. <laughs> um, I, I want to thank everybody for letting me have the honor of teaching your student in my class. Thank you. Amen. We'll give them all a hand at the end, all right? I'm Christy Capps. I teach second grade. Um, this is my third year here, and I thank you for allowing me to t serve God here at your school. Amen. We'll give you a hand too. Thank you so much. My name is Travis Walls, and I teach the third grade. This is my fifth year of teaching here, my seventh year overall. And I consider it an honor and privilege to be able to work with the young people. Thank you. My name is Craig Price. This is the first year uh, teaching up here. And uh, I teach fourth grade, and I also coach the boys' basketball team. And we have a lot of fun with that. And I just don't want to. Well, we do. We have a lot of fun with that. <laughs> And I just want to thank the Lord for the opportunity he's given me to be up here this year. Thank you. Amen. My name is Julia Stiltner. I teach the fifth and sixth grade, and I do count it an honor to be here, and I'm thankful for the opportunity to teach your children as well. Amen. Thank you, Julia. Hello, my name is Charlotte Adcox. I've been teaching for 23 years. I'm in my fourth year here at Mount Pisgah. And I teach third grade science for Mr. Walls and junior high and senior high math. Thank you. My name is Melissa Sykes. This is my second year teaching at Mount Pisgah. I teach histories, health, journalism, and anything else Mr. Barker asks. <laughs> I'm Donna Campbell, and I teach biology and chemistry to the high school, and I'm, I'm working just part-time, and this is my first year of teaching here. Right, good job. <laughs> uh, my name is Bonnie Reed. I'm a, a teacher in the junior and senior high. This is my fourth year at Mount Pisgah, and I thank the Lord for the privilege of uh, working with the young people here. Thank you. Not with us tonight is our first grade teacher, Miss Carrie Snow, and Miss Lawson is here, but I don't know where she's at. She's our secretary, and Miss Marler is here, who's also Miss Miss Lawson. Miss Lawson, Miss Lawson, Miss Marler, look at this. Yeah. Miss Marler teach, uh, teaches subs for me, and she's our assistant to all the elementary teachers and PE recess and lunch. And Miss, of course, Miss Lawson is our secretary. We appreciate them. All right. <laughs>
I'm going to invite you to stand to your feet, if you would, please. The choir's going to come down. The ladies are going to play for us. We'd like for you to turn around and shake hands with those around you. Fellowship one with the other, if you would, please, as the choir comes down. Thank you, ladies. Thank you so very much. All right, if I can have some men to come help tonight with the offering. Men, if you'll come, please. Thank you so very much for your help, young men here. Uh, well, let's ask the Lord to bless the offering at this time. I'll ask my son to come and pray for us. Let's pray. Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for giving this opportunity to get back what you've given to us. Thank you for being such an awesome God. Thank you for Jesus in the exclusive way that he is to heaven and we just want to thank you for loving us please help us now to give cheerfully and with a good attitude and bless the remainder of this service in your name i pray amen amen may the lord bless as we give tonight
All her sins and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3, 23. See, children, obey your parents, for in the Lord this is right, Ephesians 6, 1. E, even the child is known by his doings, Proverbs 20, 11. F, fear not, I with you. I'll see you. Five. Gee, God is love. First John four eight. Jay, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John fourteen six. Keep that time for me with Psalms forty four fourteen. <coughs> L. Look. Unto me and be ye saved. Isaiah 45 22. My son, give me the heart. Proverbs 23 26. We're going to do a congregational song right now. We're going to have you remain seated. The only people that like to stand, and if you have a child that you want to have sit with you while we sing, they're going to be coming back to you at this time. So only if you have a child that you would want to sit with you. <laughs> and if you don't want to sit with you and they're supposed to sit with you, stand anyhow, please. Uh, we'll have you stand at this time, okay? So only if you have a child, Brother Harvey's going to come and lead us into a song. We'll sing the first and last verse, 173. <coughs> Love lifted me. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry from the waters lifted me now say how my love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted me me when nothing else could help love left in me sing the last one souls in danger look above Jesus completely saves he will lift you by his love out of the angry waves he's a master of the sea Billows his will obey. He, your Savior, wants to be, be saved today. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me. Love Nothing else 
I just wanted to thank all my young students that did a wonderful job. I appreciate their hard work and our teachers' hard work. After the service, kindergarten through sixth grade, you'll be going downstairs for some pizza. And, of course, if you're in the high school or seventh through twelfth grade, I should say, you're welcome to come over to my house and we'll have uh, some, a good time over there. One person I did fail to mention, which is very important in our school, very important, is Miss Keithley because she's our cook. And uh, we want to thank Miss Keithley for doing a wonderful job for our school, too. And we thank you, for uh, parents, for bringing your students here tonight. I, I sure do appreciate it. And uh, God bless you. And have a wonderful night. And we'll see you tomorrow morning. Thank you, Nathan. Let's give him a good hand again while you say, all right? You folks that are still standing for someone to come and sit with you, go ahead and be seated. They're not going to, so <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> we do have a program for those children two through five years of age downstairs tonight. Our service will not last long. I Hopefully by 7.30 or 7.35 we'll be out the door. So I promise I'll not be long tonight. But if you're dismissed to go there if you wish to, if you want your child to go to the program tonight, someone will be teaching them a Bible lesson, have some things for them. They're welcome to go there. We'll give them just a moment to head that direction and uh, it's a good program we do it every Sunday night all right by the way if you get an opportunity you are to come watch one of the basketball games our, our boys and our girls it is it, it's a lot of fun it really is it really is it's very enjoyable okay let's give them just another moment or two I think of a church service several years ago. I heard a pastor tell about about a child was misbehaving in church, and the parents had told him they ought to be quiet, and ought to be quiet, and they wouldn't be quiet. And finally, the parent picked the child up and threw him across the shoulder and was headed toward the back door. When they got back almost to the back door, the little child raised his head up off the parent's shoulder and said, You all pray for me. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I've been there before. <laughs> Needing all the prayer I could get. <laughs> I want you to picture me tonight just one, th one scene if I could quickly for you. In the Bible there's an event in the Old Testament where two men meet together to decide the destiny of a nation. Those two men's name are familiar. David and who's the other one? Goliath. Whoever wins the battle their nation is going to be free. Well, we read in the scriptures when the clashing of the armor is gone and when the dust has settled on the battlefield that David removes the sword from Goliath and cuts his head off. And the Bible says, and when they found out their champion was dead, they fled. Do you have any heroes in your life? I remember as a child growing up and we didn't have television when I grew up. We, didn't, we had running water, but you had to go get it. <laughs> you know what I mean, don't you? And my, I remember my, my grandfather, Tom Hill. He had a radio set, and I think it was on Saturday evenings. He would gather us around the radio, and he would turn the radio on, and he said, Now, you all be quiet and sit still now. Something's going to happen. And all of a sudden, you'd hear the horse hoofs hitting, and hear the music in the background, hear the voice, Hi, hi, old, the who? the lone ranger and I, honestly as a child the first time I ever saw that on TV I was I know you think this is dumb of me but I was so amazed how that horse should come up on that hill get up on its hind hoofs and stand there they'd go away for a Marita bread commercial and come back a horse would be still standing there that long <laughs> I really thought that I, honestly I did <laughs> but the lone ranger became a hero now, the Lone Ranger became a hero because the Lone Ranger one time, and he and some of his partners were riding out chasing some bad people, and they went through this canyon area, and one of the rangers had betrayed them and turned against them, and they were shot, and he was the only one that survived. Tonto came by, of course, and revived him. He put the mask on somebody no matter who he was. He fought for justice with a silver bullet and a horse, and he became a hero. There's other people that are heroes. When you think about those, we, we heard you about the spider. Spider-Man's a hero. Spider-Man got bit one time by a spider. 
Y'all don't know you get all this spiritual stuff here tonight, did you? <laughs> and Spider-Man had, had all those things he could do. He could throw that web out there and swing all over town, you know. He became a hero. We have those heroes in our culture. Superman. Man, Superman. He was the one whose their planet was going to blow up out in space. His mom and dad didn't want him to die. And they put him in this capsule. He came to Earth and got off down here. Had all this superhuman power, you know. Superman. And then there's the incredible Hulk. Hulk. I'm not talking about the preacher either. <laughs> he was a radio action and got in his body and somehow it affected him because he was a scientist. And every time he'd get mad, he'd make him swell up in this big old green monster. He could handle anything. The Incredible Hulk. I'm on your own spiritual level yet. Everybody know where I am? And then there's Batman. I don't know how Batman became a hero. I've studied, I've looked everywhere. All I know is he wanted to do some justice after his parents evidently had passed away. All those are fictitious heroes. But there's some real heroes in the Bible that when you look at them, are, my goodness, they're so important in our lives. And every child needs a hero. Every child needs someone they can look up to. It's amazing that the parents are, are actually, believe this or not, and you may not think it's true, but in a survey, parents are children's heroes. For the most part, mom and dad, they're the heroes that you have, that, we, that you're, you live with them, you're, you raise them. And certainly it ought to be the aspiration of all of our young people. And thank you so much for letting them come to our Christian school. And thank you for letting us have them in these years that they're here. It's so vital for their lives. And I'm thankful for so many things we get to do with them. I really am. I appreciate it so much. Thank you so much. And thank you to our staff who works underpaid but does a good job. I appreciate what they do. But everybody needs a hero. So I want to talk to you tonight just about, in just a few minutes, I promise you, on how you can be a hero. As a young person, you can be a hero. As a parent, how you can be a hero. David, the champion, this, this, this David who became a hero of the people of Israel, and his name has lived through the years. David, 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 because David was a hero. And I want to tell you some things. They may not be what you think that might be said about a hero, but it's true about David. Number one, David was a hero because he was consistent in the routine things of his life. If you'll remember with me for a few minutes, David was anointed king, but it's almost 20 years before he ever came to the throne room. But he was anointed king. He was the king appointed by God, but it took him 20 years to get there. And what David would do when, David, when Saul wanted someone to play music for him, David would go play music for him. But when David's father needed someone out in the field to keep the sheep, he'd go watch the sheep. And all the time, and what David was doing in his entire life, he was taking care of just the routine things of his life. Uh, can I put it in your East Tennessee language? He'd get up and go to work every day for his parents, for his children. They'd do the housework and do the routine things of life. It's not exciting to you, but it's things you have to do. But doing those things, he became a hero that's there. Look with me in 1 Kings, chapter, no, first, sorry, 1 Samuel chapter 16 for a second. Look at this passage of Scripture. It's the most unusual passage of Scripture. Of 1 Samuel chapter number 16. Now this is before David ever comes to be on the throne room. This is before David does much in his life. And what's happening, there's an evil spirit that's troubling Saul. And Saul wants to know how can he get anybody that can play music for him that will soothe him down. And I want you to listen how somebody, listen to this now, how someone says you ought to get David and he's going to tell him why you ought to hire David to play his music for him. Listen to what he says in 1 Samuel chapter 16. Look at verse number 16 with me. Let our Lord now, have you found it with me? Command thy servants which are before thee to seek out a man, listen to me now, who is a cunning player on the harp, and it shall come to pass that when the evil spirit shall, the Lord shall come upon thee, that thou shalt play with his hand, and thou shalt do well, or be well. And Saul said to his servant, Provide me now a man that can play well, and bring him to me. Listen now. Then answered one of the servants, and said, Behold, I have found, I have seen a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite. He's talking about David. Here's what he's seen. That he's cunning in playing. He's a mighty man of, he's a mighty valiant man. He's a man of war. He's prudent in his matters. He's a comely person, and the Lord's with him. Here's the question I want to ask you. When did that man see all those attributes in David's life? 
David was not in public view yet, but evidently that man had seen David keeping those sheep on the backside of a desert. And he said, I want to tell you that David is cunning in his playing. In other words, David didn't wait till he got into a crowd and said, listen, this is how good I can play. David took those few little sheep out there and he played the best music he could to those sheep who had no way, means of turning to him and saying, well, that sure is good playing, David. They couldn't respond to him what he was doing. David was doing his best in secret, do the best he could do. He was cunning in playing. He said he's a, he's a, listen what that man said about him. He said he is a, he's a valiant man. How would he know he's a valiant man? Because he saw David take that lion and bear that came out there to take his sheep away and David took his bare hands and he killed a lion and he killed a bear. He saw him do that in his private life. How do you know he was a man of war? Because those Philistines who had come to the land to try to steal the sheep away, David would defend his sheep against those Philistines and what David was doing, everything he was doing, he was doing in his private life. And I want to tell you, if you're going to become a hero in your life, you've got to take care of the, of the routine things of your life. Read your Bible every day. Pray every day. Be a good witness every day. Live for the Lord every day of your life. Let, let your steps be ordered by the Lord. Those things are important to letting your life be what it ought to be. Amen? Just the routine things of your life. How that he being in the way, the Lord led him. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. That's number one. Number two, if you want to be a hero... Not only should you take care of the routine things of your life, you ought to take the challenge of the impossible things in your life. There's one thing everybody has and nobody wants, is troubles. All of us have adversities. All of us have problems. All of us have difficulties. And there's things that come in our life that sometimes seem impossible. And when David went out, that little old bitty, probably 16, 17-year-old boy, looked up at that 9-foot-7 giant, it looked impossible what he was going to do. But David did not back away from the impossible. David said, did not back away from the impossible whatsoever. He faced the impossible. And sometimes in your life, you've got to learn, you can't give up. You can't stop. Things don't look good. Things don't look right financially. It looks bad. Things look terrible. But you can't give up in your life. You've got to face the impossible sometimes. You've got to get rivers you think are uncrossable. Got any mountains you can't tunnel through. Well, God specializes in things that are impossible. He'll do for you what others cannot do. Amen? Faith in God can move a mighty mountain. Faith can calm the troubled sea. Faith can make the desert like a fountain. Faith can bring the victory. I'm just telling you, if you're going to ever be a hero, you've got to learn that you've got to face the impossible things sometimes in your life and say, I will not quit, I will not give up, I will go on. Amen? Those are things you've got to do. Here's the third thing if you're going to be a hero. You've got to learn to shake off ridicule. David showed up at the battlefield that morning bringing that food to his brothers that his daddy asked him to bring. And when he got there, he heard that Goliath come out and said, give me somebody to fight. And all the Israelites went to hide, and David said, this isn't the way you're supposed to fight, is it? And he said, I'll go fight him. And his older brother, Eliab, said to him, David, what are you doing out here? Who's keeping those sheep that you have back there? What are you doing out here? You're just a busy body in our affairs. But David took the ridicule and went to fight the giant anyway. Come on. Saul takes David over to his side. And David, they bring David to Saul, and he says, you're going to fight him? He said, you're nothing but a little bit of youth, David. How are you going to fight this giant? You don't have any armor, David. And he's taking the ridicule of Saul, a man he looked up to, believe it or not. And then when he gets on the battlefield, here's that great big old giant, and he says to him, hey, little feller, I'm going to take you, and I'm going to feed you and break your body. And David looks at him and says, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, buddy. I'm going to feed you to the fowls of heaven. And what you're going to do in your life sometimes, listen to me now, if you're ever going to be a hero, you're going to always find somebody that tells you why you can't do it. You're going to find always somebody critical of what you're doing and ridicule what you do. You do like this. You do what Paul did to that snake that bit him. Just shake it off. Now, if someone says something to you that you need to learn by, you learn from it. But if someone's simply ridicule and you let it go in that ear, come out the other one to go in your heart, you just keep on going for God. I'll tell you who the person is that never gets criticized is the person that never does anything. Amen. And that's exactly right. So what you've got to do, listen to me. When ridicule comes your way, if you want to be a hero, you just kick it off. You say, I'm going to make it. I'm going to go on. I'm going to do right. Here's the fourth thing. I only have six. Am I doing good? All right. Don't get your shoes on yet. If you're going to be a hero, you've got to learn to be courageous in the Lord. David went to that giant and he said to me, he said, you come to me in the, in the arm of flesh. He said, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. I've decided this in my life, and I believe it's true, that me and God make a majority. 
if God be for you what does it matter who's against you <laughs> amen can I tell you that when you're and, I, and that's, that's not being cocky that's not being this old world cocky so I'm talking about listen folks I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me and see he that shoots at nothing usually hits it right I mean, and what happens is our, is our aim is too low in our Christian life I, I know somebody said it's going to shock you and everybody's going to go ah oh, when I say this you better go ah oh, when I say this I'm 59 years old thank you so much thank you I, I don't look it do I you boys be quiet I'm not talking to y'all you know what my prayer is I want to do more for God in the last years I've got than the years I, huh? you say well you're physically not able well it's alright I still want to accomplish more for God than I've done it's, oh there's so many things we can do with what we have available to us as Christians in this area you and I live in my goodness folks there's no, this isn't a place to stop this isn't a place to give up think of all that's available to us all the presses we can buy all the television things we can have for instance this program tonight will be on television in about three or four weeks we'll have several free programs given to us and we'll have maybe as a means to show people about young people can have a good time and still love the Lord amen, amen. and we can enjoy doing so but you've got to learn to be courageous in the Lord if you're ever going to be a hero there's something else two more things now if you're going to be a hero you've got to make sure the anointing of God's upon your life that's a strong term for me to use but can I just tell you this you've got to make sure the, you're filled with the Holy Spirit of God See, David went out there, not in his own presence, but he went out there with the Holy Spirit of God in his life and God's power upon his life. And, and I, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to get into some area uh, about different things about this or that, but I just want to tell you this. But you are to seek every day for God to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Now, he, he, when you got saved, he came to live with you. But, 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 but a lot of times, it's like the guy I heard praying one day, I heard, heard him praying one day, Oh, God, fill me. Oh, God, fill me. And someone said, you keep asking God that. And he said, why do you keep asking? He said, because I leak. <laughs> and don't you know sometimes in your own life, come on, you leak. I leak sometimes. Yeah. And you need to ask God continually, God fill me. God use me. God help me. God direct me. Lord, order my steps today. Help me say the right things today. Bring me in the right path to someone today. God use me today. Holy Spirit of God, fill me today. Holy Spirit of God, help me today. Holy Spirit of God, strengthen me today. And ask God to help you. You say, well, I'm a housewife. He'll help, he'll help housewives too. You say, I work at a job. He'll, he'll help those who work on the job too. I teach, he'll teach, help those. I'm just a young person. I'm just a young per person. God helps you young people as well. Holy Spirit to fill them. Here's the last thing I want to say to you. If you're going to be a hero, you've got to never let the defeat and discouragement of others stop you. Did you know where, you know where the army of Israel was? They were hiding in the caves. They, they were scared. All of them were hiding in the caves. They didn't come out until David had, to, had his hand holding like this. Here he is, fellas. They came out then. But you can't let the cowardice or others that have stopped make you quit. One of the best things, you know the dumbest thing I ever think of in my life? If people say, I'm just going to quit. Oh, puke. That's a good word, puke. If you don't like puke, try vomit. Or regurgitate. What good are you doing quitting? Pray tell me who you happen. You don't want to join up with the devil's side. Come on. My goodness gracious alive, folks. Here we are. We want to live our lives. We want them to count for God. We don't have only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ is going to, to last. We're going to be a hero. You can't let the, when others have stopped and others have quit, you cannot turn back that you must continue to go on. I told you about this already at the start of the sermon that David decided the destiny of his nation when he defeated that giant Goliath because after David defeated him the armies joined together they went after him and they pursued the Philistines and they won a great battle that day that's not the greatest heroes of scriptures there was another one his name is Jesus Christ he too caught a great battle on a hill one day at Calvary and the son of God died for your sins and he died for my sins now that wasn't the end of the battle. They did bury him 
He did stay in the grave for three days. But on the third and appointed morning, I want to tell you, he arose victorious over death, hell, and the grave. He, he was delivered for our offenses, yet he rose again for our justification. The just for the unjust, he might bring us to God, being put to death in the spirit, but, put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the spirit. For God so loved the, come on, you know what, he helped me, love, love the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's what God did for us. He won the victory. He's our, he's our federal head of victory. When we're in him, we have the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray you know him. Now our heads are about, our eyes are closed. You're more than gracious to come tonight. You're more than gracious to listen tonight. I'm going to do something a little different tonight. I, wouldn't, I won't embarrass you. I won't put anybody on the spot. Honest, I won't. Perhaps tonight you'd like to slip out of your seat and you'd like to pray for your child or for your grandchild that God would make something of their lives. You'd like to pray for God to help you to be what you need to be for them as an example or with their hearts, their lives. I'm going to kneel here. I have five grandchildren. I'm going to ask God to help me. I want to be what I can be for them. I'm going to do that first tonight. While they're playing for us on the instruments, if you'd like to come and like to pray for yourself, like to pray for your, a child, or like to pray for a grandchild, like to pray for someone in your family, I'm going to kneel and I'm going to pray that I'm going to extend the invitation a little bit longer just for a second. of prayer just for a few minutes. No one's looking around. Our heads are about, our eyes are closed. I realize when we come together there's a good possibility in our midst there's someone who doesn't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It's not in our intentions to make a Baptist out of you. It's not our intentions to embarrass you. I just want you to make sure if you die you'd go to heaven. And I want to ask you if you're here tonight you're not sure you're saved. I want to ask you to do me a favor just for a moment. If there's a want to in your heart to know Christ, if you really want to know Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, there's really a desire in your heart to know Him, I'm going to ask you right where you're seated to pray this prayer with me. Just pray this prayer with me right where you're seated. Dear Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. I want you to forgive me of my sin. And I want you to come into my heart and save me. I believe you died for me and you rose again. I trust you now to save me. I'm not going to embarrass anybody. I'm not going to point anybody out. I want to ask you a favor. While every head bowed, every eye closed just for a second, please, no one looking around, out of respect. If you prayed that prayer with me tonight, right where you're seated, if you prayed that prayer with me tonight, you trusted Christ to be your Lord and Savior, right where you sit tonight. While our heads are about our eyes are closed, would you raise your hand where I can see it? Right back down. Pastor, I pray that prayer for you to trust Christ to save me. Would you raise your hand where I can see it? God bless you. I'm glad you did that. Someone else? Make sure I see it and you put it right back down. Someone else, quickly, could I see your hand? Quickly. Where I can see it and you put it right back down. Not going to embarrass you. Just want to rejoice with you. All right, now here's what I want to tell you. I'm thankful for the, that person that did do that. Amen. Please stay after the services so I can talk with you for a few minutes and give you something that will help you be a blessing and encouragement to you. Please do that for me, please, if you would. 
We're going to do this tonight, and then we'll be going home. If you're here tonight and you've been saved somewhere else, but you've never made it public at a church service, I want you to uh, simply come tonight. You need to make public what Christ has done for you. If you need to get baptized tonight or set a time to get baptized, I want you to come. If this is a church family you feel like you ought to be a part of, I want you to come. We're singing just as I am. That's it, isn't it? Let's stand together. We'll sing one verse. If you need to come, you come while we stand, while we wait. Just as I am. Thank you, students. William Sylvie, good to see you at church. Now, where's William? Where's William? Good to see you, William. He's been sickly. Good to see him in church. We're glad he's able to come tonight. Do me a favor before you leave. Why don't you tell some of these teachers uh, that you just appreciate them or if you see them around here or tell some of the students that what a good job they did. All right? Thank you for coming. You're a very nice group of people tonight to speak to, and I appreciate it. God bless you.